Hello and welcome to the official non-esports YouTube channel. I am Kadoink and today we have spawning in the bottom right of Shakur's Plateau, the red Protoss player here today representing Team Non-Esports, Master Chief, and his opponent in the bottom left of Shakur's. We have the blue Zerg opponent, Dan. Looks like we had a bit of a pause at the beginning of the game. No big deal. No advantages to either player. Sometimes you can kind of pause and... Or sometimes your opponent pauses and you think, oh, well, I'll tab out of the game for a bit. And then they unpause and catch you off guard. But, of course, this is in the Master League, so players are a lot more mannered and, you know, saying things like, you ready? I remember once I was playing in my dorm room and someone knocked on my door. And I asked the guy if I could pause so I could go see who it was, and I did. And then when I came back, the game had been on pause for, like, five minutes. Uh, of course, I was in Platinum League at the time, so understandable BM there. So it looks like Master Chief is going to be going for uh, perhaps a Forge Fast Expand. That's kind of the most common thing we see in the PvZ matchup. So I imagine when he scouts his opponent, I imagine he's going to put down a Forge and then perhaps a Nexus. But of course, he could go Nexus first. That is kind of a, a ballsy play as well. But he's not going to see a pool. So he might feel a little bit more safe. He um, knows that his opponent's probably sitting around 14, 15 supply. And I imagine Dan is going to be going hatch first. This is kind of what I suspect to see from the Zerg opponent. Um, no, actually, it looks like he's going to go for the pool first, which is also a very common thing to do. A little bit safer of a play. But now that Master Chief knows that, saw that spawning pool go down, he might be a little more apprehensive to put down the Nexus first and might decide to uh, put down a Forge. But eh, he might. He's floating quite a bit of minerals. He's moving his probe down, in fact, right around the time where he'll have 400. And yeah, indeed, he is going to be going Nexus first. So Master Chief playing a little bit riskier, but at the same time, if he keeps this advantage, uh, it's going to be very huge. He also blocked off uh, Dan's hatchery by putting down a pylon. This is going to force Dan to have to move up and take this third as his, as his second base. Um, and what that's going to allow Master Chief to do is perhaps put on a little bit of early aggression. He might do some sort of two base all in. Uh, he might just feign a little bit of pressure or he might do a pretty sizable pressure and just try to pick up this third uh, because it'll be a lot more vulnerable there. But we'll have to see what Master Chief decides to do. This drone, of course, picking away. At this pylon, we have four lings on the way to help finally get rid of it, and they'll be able to clean it up, and by the time they get across the map with this gateway here, I imagine he'll put down a cannon as soon as this, yeah, it's going to put it right here, and then another pylon, and he'll just be able to park a probe right there, or a zealot, and should be able to block any lings from getting in, so I don't think Master Chief has anything to worry about about kind of a ling rush or anything like that, and of course, uh, Dan does spot this wall, and he knows... He knows what's going on. There's no kind of surprise there. Looks like Dan uh, is going to be scouting around with some Zerglings trying to find pylons uh, and probes. That's kind of a very smart thing to do. This is something that kind of separates um, a lot of the leagues. You know, He's going to find this probe and he's going to kill it off and so a pylon won't be placed here and if Master Chief is deciding to do some sort of two base all in or some sort of early pressure, uh, he's really going to need a pylon across the map to make it um, very effective, or at least that's going to be kind of easier to make it effective, so killing off that probe is so nice for Dan, uh, it's going to allow him to feel a lot safer. However, there are times where sometimes you don't catch all the probes, perhaps there's, perhaps there's two on the map and a cannon is, uh, excuse me, a pylon is in here, or perhaps somewhere over here, something like that. And it looks like uh, he's going to be chrono boosting out that plus one. That's going to be very nice for results, uh, allowing his zealots to kill zerglings in two shots. And I suspect pressure. I suspect I suspect pressure for Master Chief. This is kind of something that I feel like he's going to be doing. He's getting this double gas quite early, so I suppose he's going to be going for a robo. Uh, probably right off the bat to try to pump out some immortals and, of course, an observer. He might even go for some sort of warp prism play. I'd love to see that. Uh, especially because he knows his opponent had to take this as a natural, you know, and this is just now finishing, so he can really abuse this kind of distance uh, with a warp prism. He can push into the main, or excuse me, push into the third and then use the warp prism into the main, especially because they're kind of close air. 
The only difficulty with that is, of course, there are a lot of overlords placed throughout the map. And yeah, we do have the robotics facility on the way, just as I thought. And then after this, I'm sure he'll be putting up some gateways, uh, maybe teching up to, to something. Might be going Colossus, but the most common thing is going to be those immortals, as well as a, a good bit of stalkers, and probably moving across the map and trying to put on some pressure, try to kill this third if possible. So what's Dan doing? Dan's got his uh, natural up finally. He's got queens at his bases, needs to be getting those injects, but I think he wants to start spreading his creep. Uh, it looks as though he feels a bit vulnerable about this third. He's going to be putting up those spore crawlers. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some spine crawlers go down as well. And in his main, he's uh, just getting up his roach warren at a pretty usual time. He's getting double gas in his main. He doesn't have gas anywhere else, so I don't think he's going to be teching two infestors that quickly. Uh, even though I think that's kind of the most common choice in the PvZ matchup, I, I suspect eventually he'll tech two infestors. But right now I think he really just wants to get a healthy drone count and then be able to pop out a whole horde of roaches at any given moment. So he's really droning up uh, pretty heavily. In fact, let's, let's look at the worker supply. We have 53 to 45 workers. Uh, Dan, of course, in the lead being a Zerg player. And he's going to be wanting to sit at about 65, 75, somewhere in there on three base. And usually then you'd see your roach production, but it looks like Dan's going to want to be getting his up a little bit earlier. Um, might feel a little bit worried. He's getting his lair up so he can get uh, his upgrades for his roaches. Also now just getting his double extractor. So I think this is about the time where he'll start thinking about adding infestors into the mix, getting that infestation pit once once the layer finishes, and then of course getting pathogen glands and those usual things. Looks like Master Chief is doing the usual Protoss thing, adding just a ton of gateways. In fact, it looks like we have a total of eight, um, nine, nope, total eight. So yeah, it looks like a two base all in. Um, eight gates is something that's a little bit difficult to support off two base. Uh, you generally want to stick to about seven, especially if you're going to be getting that robo. And in fact, we do see a warp prism come out. Uh, so yeah, he's going to be doing some pretty heavy two base all-in pressure. And we'll see how effective it is. If we look at the Zerg's base, he doesn't have that many roaches. In fact, in total, in the unit tab, we see he only has 14. And there are two immortals and six sentries. And with this warp prism, he can warp things directly in the middle of the battle. So Master Chief is going to be putting on some pretty heavy aggression here and I think he might be able to at least get the third if not the third and maybe do some damage to the natural so we'll have to see how this works out for Master Chief he's moving across the map at this time warping in just a few more stalkers and he might even send that warp prism into the main once he starts his pressure that would be so cool no it looks like he's gonna keep it with his army that's another wise deci decision so both players just kind of staring neck and neck. It looks like Master Chief's going to be moving forward. Some force fields going down, but not really catching that many roaches. Dan is doing all right right now, but he really needs that glial reconstitution. Uh, he really wants that speed for his roaches so he can reinforce roaches. And once again, Master Chief moving forward. Some great force fields splitting the roach army in half. He's going to be able to pick off a lot of these. Uh, in fact, a good bit goes down. The rest going up into the third very wisely to... Uh, kind of get together with these spine crawlers, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. This is a huge force for Master Chief. Uh, he's heading supply, and he's just moving straight up the ramp. He's not having to think about micro or anything. He's just kind of 1A clicking into the base, and he's going to get this third for sure, and then we'll see what he can pick off after that. Uh, he's going into the mineral line, seeing how many drones he can get. A lot of drones going down, and wow, Dan's just going to go ahead and GG. Nice all in, he says. Very mannered by Dan. Uh, so yeah, great game by Master Chief. That's a good example of a very strong two base all in. If you um, if you're a Protoss player and you want to try it, just copy the build order, and uh, you can probably get a lot of wins against Zerg, especially if you can force them to take their third first rather than their natural. Uh, that tends to be something that's that's very very helpful. And then of course this warp prism is a very nice touch. You can just continue to warp in right at the Zerg player's base. So if you're a Protoss player, definitely look at that build. It's super strong. And uh, congratulations, Master Chief, for this great win. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this cast. If you did, please subscribe and comment and like the video uh, here at Non-Esports. We would love that. Um, yeah, and then if you also like my casting uh, style, excuse me, 
you can check out my own personal YouTube channel, and there'll be a link uh, in the description bar for that. And then finally, uh, of course, please go to our website. There'll be a link in the description bar. Uh, we are a German team, but you can translate the site into English, and we'd really appreciate it if you check out the site. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys later.